Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I'm going to bring you some really fun and budget-friendly, high-end Dollar Tree bathroom or bedroom DIYs. I love the rustic style, so this is what this whole video is all about. So if you want to see what I came up with, stay tuned. This video is also part of a collab, which I will talk about in just a little bit. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Coming into the summer season, I have so many ideas for around the home, refreshers and organization plus we are going to be getting my backyard ready for summer so if that sounds like anything you'd be interested definitely subscribe and click that bell so you're notified all right let's jump right in to these diys so all of these diys today are actually going to be inspired by the stencil right here they are the perfect colors to go into my master bathroom and bedroom so we're going to get started with our first diy so first we're going to start off with this hanging sign that of course i got from the dollar tree and i'm going to begin by taking out off the hanger by just using my screwdriver and then i'm going to use my heat gun and my little scraper knife thing <laughs> to get off the sticker. Now because there was still residue left over from the sticker, I went ahead and sanded it down to make it a nice smooth surface for when I go to paint it. Now on the other side of this of the sign that's actually the front. I went ahead and took off that um, metal word and then I'm peeling as much as that paper off as possible. This is actually gonna be the bottom of what we're making so it's not even gonna be seen but I thought that I would clean it up as much as I could. So for the paper I couldn't get off, I just went ahead and sanded this down really well so at least it wouldn't scrape up or anything. Next, I'm going to take a smaller brush and use ivory chalk paint, and the ivory chalk paint is what I'm going to be using in this whole video because these are rustic DIYs, so you are going to see a lot of ivory. But to start off with, I'm just going to paint around the edge of my sign, and you'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to take these rhinestone stickers, and I'm going to go ahead and place them around the perimeter of my sign, and I'm going to make sure that the, it goes all the way around so I might have to use two of these strips and then I'm going to take off individual rhinestones to fill in the gaps. Next, I'm going to take that small brush again with my ivory chalk paint, and I'm simply going to paint over these rhinestones to make it look like they were like beads or, you know, those risers that have the beads on uh, the perimeter and like the edges. So that's kind of what we're making here today. Then after the side was painted, I'm just going to take a bigger brush and I'm going to take paint the top and I'm going to give the sides and the top two coats. Now I'm going to flip my board over and I'm going to use these square, rounded squared beads and it came from like a brain teaser game from uh, the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to simply hot glue four down to make little legs for my riser. Now these do have holes in it so you do want to make sure that you either glue the hole to the actual tray itself or so the hole is on the bottom. Next, I'm just going to take my paint and I'm going to paint the little legs and the bottom of this uh, riser as well. Now, to give it that nice rustic, distressed look, I'm going to take a sponge, I'm going to dip it in Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm going to kind of... Uh, just kind of pounce it off a little bit on my mat there so it's not so dark and then I'm just going to uh, go ahead and put it all around my tray. I'm going to put it on the rhinestones, I'm going to put it uh, on the bottom of the legs and then I'm going to go over the top. Now if this is not your style you absolutely can skip this step and just leave it with the pure ivory but you know me I love that rustic look so I wanted to go ahead and add it. 
Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel if you're new. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. If you don't know, my name is Ashley. Like I said, I am a wife and a mama of two, a six-year-old and an almost eight-month-old. I work from home and I do all things DIY, home makeovers, room makeovers, decorating are my biggest ones, room refreshers, and life hacks and mama hacks. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, definitely stay tuned. In fact, all of these DIYs that you see today will be put into a master bedroom and bathroom refresh video in the future, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Now for the parts that kind of got a little dark with the wax, I'm just taking that ivory paint and just brushing it right over to kind of make it a little duller. And I really love how this turned out. This is going to be the perfect riser to put in the corner of the vanity in my bathroom. And that way I can set um, like Q-tips and mouthwash and like little decor items on so I'm excited to use it and here's how it turned out and you will see a final reveal at the very end so I am so excited to say I am in a collab today and it has been forever so when Liana DIY reached out to me and asked if I could be a guest in her collab I jumped on it because I love collabing with other talented crafters and DIYers on YouTube also joining us is Farm Charm Chic and the Rusted Willow. I am sure you know who those crafters are. And the playlist will be down below in the description box. So after you're done with this video, check them out because you will not be disappointed. And I can't wait to see what they came up with. And today's theme was craft your stash. So all of these items I already had and I did not make one trip to the Dollar Tree or any other stores to get these items. So I hope you enjoy it. And thank you so much to Liana DIY for inviting me to participate. Now let's jump in to DIY number two. I had this jar lid, or actually I think it's a candle lid, in my stash, and then I also had this little glass cup, and look at this, they fit perfectly together. They did not come together, but I just noticed that they fit perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spray paint the lid with my oil rubbed bronze spray paint. And you're going to see it in my master bathroom when you watch my video, when it comes out, <laughs> um, that all of my fixtures are actually the oil rub bronze. I love this oil rub bronze and it's all over my house. So I thought I would spray paint the lid to tie it all in. Once that was dry, I thought I would dress up this jar a little bit by adding some twine around the like lip of the jar. So I'm actually going to double up on it. And my whole point here was, was when you put that lid inside, you can see that rubber piece there. So what I wanted to do was hot glue the twine around so it didn't really stick out or stand out. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of use my hot glue to glue it in some places and go all the way around around the top of that jar and then you'll see I am actually going to peel that sticker off at the bottom as well Now I thought this jar would be perfect for some Q-tips. My husband uses Q-tips every single day, so I thought it would be nice to have them displayed, but in a really cute decor piece, which is what I wanted to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my Q-tips in the jar, and then to dress it up a little bit, I'm gonna take this jumbo popsicle stick, I'm gonna cut a little rectangle out of it. Then I'm going to sand it down, and I'm going to cut the sides or the points of the sides to make it look like a tag. You'll see here in just one second. So I'm going to cut it in the shape of a tag and then I'm going to dry brush some of that ivory chalk paint on top of it. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day. 
Next, I'm going to take one of the rub-on transfers from the sheet that I showed you earlier, and I'm just going to simply rub it on. Now, these did work um, really well. The trick is, is you want to apply lots of pressure, and it does help if you're using something sharp and pointy to rub it on with. And when you peel it off, peel it off slowly very slowly and if you see that something is not completely rubbed on just put it back down and just keep uh, applying pressure and rubbing it on next I'm gonna take my sponge that has the Waverly antique wax and I am going to just um, dab it all around the sides of that tag Next, I took another piece of twine. I'm going to wrap it around where the other twine is. I'm going to tie it in a knot and then bring the two ends together. And that is where I'm going to tie a, the tag, or I'm sorry, glue the tag. So I'm going to go ahead and, and bring them together and then glue the tag right on those ends. Now, it did kind of hang funny, so you are going to see that I do end up gluing the actual tag to the glass, which you're going to see in a second. But uh, for now, I'm just going to glue it right to the twine. And then there you go, it goes right to the glass. Now, I did feel like this needed just one more extra touch, so I just went ahead and made a simple bow out of the twine, and I'm going to hot glue that to where all the twine meets in the middle right above the tag, and that's it to this jar. It was simple, it was easy, it was free because I already had everything, so can't get any easier than that. So DIY number three is to hide all of those things that you may need, especially women, a certain time of the month, but you don't really just want them sitting out. So we are going to create a little um, hidden box, so to speak. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a book, any book will do, but the thicker the better, and you're just going to start cutting out squares in the middle of your pages. So I know you know what I'm talking about. You see these all the time in movies or TV shows and probably on YouTube channels. So what you want to do is you want to cut or you want to push as hard as you can so you can cut as many pages as once. Now I am going to warn you. Yes, this is time consuming, but it is so easy to do. So I probably cut, I definitely cut like three fourths of this book, probably more. I did not leave very many full pages. And as you can see, I pushed so hard that look at all those pages that I was able to cut out at once. So that's what you want to do. You may have to use your scissors for some of it, but mostly you want to use a very sharp knife and just cut your pages until you have a pretty good like hollow space in your book there's a new day to take away your sorrow so once you have all your pages cut out i was trying to figure out okay you can see when you open it it the the pages move and no the the inside's not pretty but it doesn't need to be because I'm the only one that's going to be seeing the inside right so don't judge that but I was trying to figure out okay how can I get all these pages to stick down without going individually and like gluing every single page down so this is what I decided to do I took some tape and I'm cutting little strips I'm putting it on the top and pulling as fat as hard as I can wrapping it around the whole bundle of cut pages. So I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. I'm going to do one on either end and then one in the middle. But the trick is you want to pull as tight as you can to keep all of those cut pages together. So because you taped all of the cut pages together, now you can hot glue the whole thing down to the bottom of the book. Then I went through and kind of hot glued pages that I saw sticking up too. Like wherever I saw it was kind of bubbling, I just hot glued it down. After that, I again took my ivory chalk paint and I painted this entire 
book except for the pages because I still wanted this to look like a book so I left the pages alone but you know I, I went on the insides too so you didn't really see that blue I did cut, paint the bottom then I even opened my book and I painted the blue tape so it blended in with this um with the ivory and you're gonna see after three coats of this you can't even tell that there is tape there now I did dry the paint in between each coat so that way um, you know the paint would stick but look at this it blends right in and you would never be able to know so I did have the issue though of the top cover wanting to pop up so to kind of fix that I'm gonna show you what I did but it did take some thinking so I'm gonna cut off a long piece of jute twine I'm going to triple it actually I guess it would be quadrupling it so I'm gonna fold it in half then fold it in half again I'm going to wrap it underneath so the ends are at the top I hope that made sense okay I'm jumping ahead okay wrap it underneath and then I was like okay but I have to make this easily accessible so I can just open it and shut it I don't want to have to untie it every time so what I'm going to do is use Velcro. So I just cut off a very small square of Velcro and I'm going to, of course, attach them. Then I'm going to measure where I want my ends to meet. I'm going to cut it down and then I'm going to put the sticky part on the tool or on the twine, sorry, and then I'm going to hot glue it down. So that's one part of the Velcro. Then I'm going to pull as tight as I can. I'm going to put the other end of the Velcro on to its matching part. I'm going to cut it, put the strings on that, cut it down. And I did apply some hot glue so it would all stick together. Now to hide that, I'm actually going to take this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make a very simple bow. It's like an awareness bow that I just took some twine to uh, tie it in the middle. And then I'm just simply going to hot glue that to the Velcro on the top. So I really hope that made sense. Hopefully watching it, you like understood it. Um, it was so easy though, and it it's functional, but yet it's cute. So this is for all those things that you kind of use like every day or those things that you want out easily accessible, but you don't want them really to be seen. So this is a great way to hide those things. So I'm just going to show you here how you could kind of dress it up. Uh, I'm, I'm, you can like stick a plant in it there, but I think where I'm going to put it, I'm going to probably put something on it. So I don't know, stay tuned for that video and you can see how I decorate it. But there you go. You have a really easy box that you can hide all of those things you don't want to be seen in your bedroom or your bathroom. Okay, next we're gonna make a little sign, and this really could be used anywhere, not just the bathroom or bedroom, but I have this little house off of a Dollar Tree sign. I've, I've had, you know, I've had this for years, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it two coats or maybe three coats of ivory chalk paint, just so all that wording is completely covered. After that, I'm going to take another one of these rub-on transfers, and I love it because it says they built a life they loved, and I thought this would be perfect for my master bathroom because, of course, it's for me and my husband. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that on, and I love the fact that it was on a house too. It just kind of all goes together, and I loved it. So like I said, these do go on, but you do want to go slow. You want to apply a lot of pressure, and you want to use something sharp to apply it. Now, after that, I realized I forgot to paint the edges of this house, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now because I want to make sure that it's completely covered. Then, of course, you know I'm going to go in with my sponge and my Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm going to especially pay attention to the edges of this house, but then I'm going to kind of dab lightly in the middle of the house too, and I'm going to take that ivory um, chalk paint and I'm going to lightly brush over that uh, rub-on transfer so it all blends in and it makes it look even more rustic.
Next, I'm going to take this frame that I got from the Dollar Tree a while ago. I'm going to use my screwdriver to take out this little clip at the top. And then I'm simply just going to hot glue my little house on the frame. And that's it. So the easiest way I found to do it, though, was to take my hot glue and to put it on the raised um parts of this like the backing just push it down now I thought about adding like a twine bow or something but then I changed my mind I thought that this was perfect as it was but I did want to go ahead and dark darken that frame since I do like darker wood better than lighter wood and this would go better with everything in my bathroom so I'm just gonna go ahead and take a baby wipe I'm gonna dip it in some Waverly antique wax and I'm gonna faux stain the frame and that's it for our next DIY, I'm going to use this little tray that, again, came from the dollar store. I had it in my stash, and I'm going to paint this entire tray with two coats of ivory chalk paint. Next, to add some texture and some detail, I'm actually going to take this twine and I'm going to start where that little hump is on the handle and I'm just going to wrap this around and around and around and around each one of these handles until they are completely covered. And I'm going to do this to both. Next, I'm going to take more of these rub-on transfers and I'm going to rub them onto the front of my tray. Now, that's it to this. I am going to add a little bit of distressing, not much, but going around the perimeter. I didn't really do it inside the tray itself because I'm going to have stuff on top of that, so I didn't worry about it. But I did go ahead and spray this with a clear coat. That way it protects it from water that will probably be splashed on there. I'm hoping that it protects it. I don't know. Time will tell. But that's it to this tray, and I thought that this came out so cute and it was so easy. This next project was actually inspired by something I saw from the Daily DIYer. And yes, we are using another book. And this time I am going to cut out the whole stack of pages. So I just want to be left with the cover. So I think this is going to go on my nightstand to hide all of those things that, you know, I use every night that are easy to reach but I want hidden so we're gonna make a cool box so to do this you want to be left with just the cover like I said and then I'm gonna take some paint sticks and I'm gonna start measuring the sides to the two sides and the long edge of the back of the book now I'm using my miter shears to go ahead and cut this my blade is broken or else it would have made a nice clean cut but I highly do recommend this because it saved me from having to make a trip to my saw and all that but uh, these miter shears do really come in handy a lot I went ahead and uh, measured um, both and then I did go ahead and sand the edges that way it was nice and smooth and then I went ahead and measured the front part after I had everything sanded down I went ahead and hot glued on all of my pieces And then I'm going to paint this entire thing in my ivory chalk paint, giving it two coats. Next, I'm going to take this picture frame that I got from the Dollar Tree. And again, by using my screwdriver, I'm going to go ahead and take off this little plate in the front. But I am going to keep it close because I'm going to use it again in just a little bit. Now, they, it did leave me two holes, so I just took some spackle and I'm just going to simply fill those holes and sand it down. Next, I'm going to flip it over and I am going to take out 
the um, paper and the glass and then I'm going to use um, a little tool to go ahead and get those tabs out because we aren't going to be needing those. After that, I'm going to flip it back to the front and again, I'm going to use my wipe and dip it into the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to faux stain it because as I said earlier, I like darker wood. So I'm just going to go ahead and faux stain this frame. After that, I'm going to flip it over and I am going to hot glue the glass on the inside of the frame, although you are going to see it pop out, so I'll have to do it again. Then I'm going to take this rub-on transfer from the sheet and I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the middle of the glass. And I love this because it says together is my favorite place to be, so I thought this was perfect for a master bedroom. Then, like I said, I went ahead and hot glued the glass back in to the frame, and this time I gave it extra glue. So now that that's done, I'm going to move back over to my book, and I am going to distress the edges. I'm going to go a little bit on the cover of the book as well. Not too much, but I am paying attention to the edges and the corners of my book to give it that rustic look. When that's done, it's now time to hot glue my frame into the middle of the book to add just a really pretty decorative touch. Then I thought it would be really cool to use that plate and hot glue it to the front of our brand new box. Now I did notice that the flap just like flapped open so I did go ahead and apply some hot glue to the like binding of the book and to like the paint sticks as you see here. Now you do have to apply a lot and kind of hold it there until the glue sets up but after that you have this brand new box that again you can use as a functioning home decor piece to hide all of your things that you don't want to be seen. I love how this came out and I can't wait to put it in my bedroom. Now this last DIY is so easy. I had this soap pump left over from a purchase I made a while ago. So I went ahead and sprayed the pump itself with that oiled rubbed bronze spray paint. And then I'm just gonna take another uh, rub on transfer and I'm just gonna simply apply it to the front of my soap dispenser and that's it. This is now ready for me to add some soap into and add it to my bathroom. Well, now that all these DIYs are complete, it is now time for the final reveal. What do you think? I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night. You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like. You're smiling, but there's something missing in your eyes. Girl, I can tell that you have something on your mind. But I will make you forget all your sorrows. Let go like there's no tomorrow. Let's have a drink, just relax. All your problems will fade. If you're ready for a good time, count on me. There's a party. I absolutely love how all of these high-end DIYs came out today. You're going to have to let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite DIY or if you think that you will be uh, crafting any of these DIYs. I know that not everyone loves the rustic style, but it's just kind of how the vibe is in my bathroom, so I thought that I would stick with that. Plus, when I saw that sheet of rub-on transfers at the Dollar Tree, I thought it would be perfect 
for the decor in the bathroom. So like I said, you're going to have to stay tuned for a future video of when I do my master bathroom and bedroom refresh video that hopefully will be coming very soon. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully you got a ton of DIY ideas and inspiration on some decor that you can make for a room in your home. And thank you so much to Liana DIY for including me in today's collab. Don't forget to check out all of the other, other amazing amazing crafters in the playlist down below. If you love today's video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click my photo to subscribe, and hey, while you're at it, check out this video too. I bet you'll love it just as much. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!